Hey guys, it's Brittany. This is my second video blog and I am really excited. So I just wanted to say thanks for all of you who watched my first video about God's love and I just really appreciate your support and thank you for your comments and I'm just really grateful that you're just on this journey with me and and that I can share my heart with you guys and you respond and, and it's just a really great conversation. So just want to say thanks. Um, really quick, I want to leave you guys with this blog. It's, it's, a, it's a short one and it's quick, but it's to the point. So I just want to tell you a quick story about my nephew Joshua. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we are waiting on a house to close. So we are actually staying with my sister-in-law and her family, her husband and two kids um, at her house. So we have thoroughly enjoyed it and we get to spend a lot of time with our nephews so this time this story is actually about Joshua and if you remember correctly the last story was about Noah so this is Joshua and I'm really excited to tell you guys this story I was uh, doing my quiet time the other day in the room that we're staying in and it was just a really um, awesome time and I, and I just kept uh, asking the Lord what what this blog should be about I kind of knew but I didn't really know how to put it into words and I sure didn't know how to explain it in any way and so I had the door closed and Joshua he's two he was knocking on the door and, and I just kept hearing his little hands knock on the door and he kept saying my name and jiggling the door handle as a two-year-old would do and kind of poked my head out and I said you know I'll be there in just a second and he kind of looked up at me like he didn't understand why I couldn't come out right then. And I said, just a second, and he ran down the hall, and he started crying, and I grabbed him real quick, and I said, nobody, I, I don't be upset, you know, basically, and I'll just be there right, I'll be right there. And he was just devastated. Uh, I, I started to kind of close the door after I, I, I told him I'll be downstairs in just a minute, and I saw him grab the railing on the stairs and he put his little head down and he started sniffling and he was upset. He had expectations of me that I didn't live up to and that was just to spend some time with him because he came and he looked for me and he found me and I couldn't spend time with him and he was just devastated. And halfway down the stairs he uh, he just... I, I said, Josh, you know, come here, and he just looked around really quickly and ran straight up to me as I was sitting at the top of the stairs, and I just held him, and he didn't say a word, he didn't want to play, he just wanted a hug, and he hugged me for about five minutes, and then he started to proceed downstairs, and I said, you know, of course, as he's going down, I said, I'll be down in just a second, he said, okay, and I started thinking, wow, you know, he had such an expectation of me, and it was so small, and, of course, he's two. He's allowed to have those expectations of me as his aunt. He's definitely allowed that. Um, but I started thinking, and the Lord really spoke to my heart, like how many of us have been Joshua before, and we've been holding on to that railing, going down the stairs, defeated and rejected. And it just made me start thinking, you know, how many of us have really been him in a an adult relationship, whether it be a friendship, a family, you know, relationship, or a dating relationship, or, or any kind of relationship. How many of us have really been Joshua, where we just expected something of someone, and even if it was so small, and they couldn't meet it, and we were devastated. And I just started thinking, wow, you know, the expectations we have put on so many people in our lives and when they don't meet it it's a problem we make it a problem we're hurt we're rejected we're angry we're mad that they're not who we think they should be we're mad or hurt or sad that they're they're not who we want them to be when they're not living up to who we think they should be period and I just started thinking wow you know as people and as human beings we do expect a lot out of people, and, and that's okay um, in certain ways of just expecting, you know, people that love you, you don't want them to hurt you. Those are good expectations, but when they do, and it's inevitable, they will. We don't really want to forgive because they didn't live up to our expectation of what we wanted them to be, or they didn't do something the way we would have done it. 
and we wonder, we just sit and we wonder and we think, man, you know, I just wish they would have done differently. I wish they would have said that differently. I wish they would have lived up to this differently. And I, I wanted this of them. And, and, and I'm speaking to people that maybe didn't have a dad in their life growing up. And you, you expect your dad to be there. And then that's a healthy expectation. However, when he wasn't, you've ripped yourself to shreds because you had an expectation of someone who's just a broken man and was not even capable of being your father or a mother who maybe was a drug addict or an alcoholic or just wasn't there period and even though she's a mother and, and you should expect her to be there and she wasn't but when we're older adults and we realize wow you know you're still unforgiving and you're still bitter and you haven't realized that she's just a broken human being and it doesn't make excuses and it sure doesn't make the pain go away but it definitely gives us a different perspective, doesn't it? Just thinking, wow, we've put these expectations on people that are just broken people and we're all human and we all hurt. And maybe the reason your dad or your mom couldn't be there for you or somebody that meant the world to you could not be there for you in the way that you had expected, maybe it's just because, you know, they're, they're just as destroyed on the inside for something that maybe we don't even know. And by putting expectations on them to be somebody that they're not even capable of being has wrecked us when they didn't arise to the occasion. It just makes me wonder how many relationships we've ruined just because we expected something that someone was not capable or had any sort of ability to give us. I mean, I myself have been in similar relationships and friendships that I just expected so much out of someone and they couldn't even give it to me because they weren't, they weren't even available emotionally, they weren't available mentally, or they weren't available physically. And I would take it personally and I would be rejected and I would be hurt and I would be Joshua. I'd be going down the stairs with my hands on the railing sniffling because I expected them to be somebody or be there and they weren't. And I expected them to be someone they weren't. And it hurt. And I took it personally. So I just want to leave you with a verse that God really spoke to me about with this story. And I hope you guys really enjoy it. I hope you guys have a great week with this. Just meditate on this. Meditate on the expectations that we put on people. And are they really fair? Are they realistic? Are we really expecting living water from broken, cracked cisterns that can't even hold anything of hope for us. We just put our life and our hope and our everything into to broken people. And when, when they hurt us or when we get hurt by them because they're just broken, we are just devastated. And I, I don't want us to keep walking like that. I don't want us to keep walking out relationships devastated because people were just not who we expected them to be and we just fail to realize that they're human and they're broken just like us and so I just want to leave you with this it's in Jeremiah 2 and it's 13 verse 13 for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and hone, hone, hone themselves cisterns broken sisters that can hold no water and I just want to leave you with that because how many of us have put so many high expectations on people, on our, people in our lives and we've forgotten that Jesus Christ is the only one that can be our everything and that can never let us down. And we've put our hope and all of our water into these people that are just broken cisterns just like us. So I leave you guys with that. I love you guys. Have a great week. And just remember we're all broken cisterns. And the only one who can fulfill us and give us everything that we need in every way is God. And if we continue to pour ourselves into people and expect something they can't give, we can't be mad when they don't return it. We just need to love them. We need to love them past their pain, past their brokenness, past everything, just like God loves us past all that. So just this week, if you just find yourself putting expectations on someone, just remember we're all broken cisterns and the only one who can fully meet us where we're at is God. He's our first love.
Let's not forsake our first love and our only love that can fully meet us where we're at. And we're all just broken cisterns. Have a great week.